This CAMP Photoshop tutorial is demonstrated in Adobe Photoshop CS3. Most or all of the techniques can be accomplished in previous versions of Photoshop. Welcome to CAMP Photoshop, the destination for new adventures and creativity. Learn more at CampPhotoshop.com. Now, Adobe Certified Expert and Head CAMP Counselor, Roger Ridpath. This is CAMP Photoshop Tutorial 005. And I want to show you how to make a Dymo label type logo very similar to this Paramount Vantage logo that I found online. Now this is going to take a couple of tutorials so we're going to get started in 005 and then you'll want to follow up in 006 to see the final refinement and results of this tutorial. So let's jump in. I found this font on dafont.com and I just typed in Dymo font, and lo and behold, I found this great font. It's free. You can download it. So if you don't know how to install a font, you can find instructions on the font, and you can also just do a Google search for installing font on Windows or installing font on the Mac. Uh, and if you know how to install a font, then you're set. Once you have that font installed, you want to fire up Photoshop. So let's jump into Photoshop. I've got that font installed. Now remember, if you want your workspace to look like my workspace, you need to go to Windows, Workspace, Default Workspace. I always try to work in the default workspace for you. Let's create a new document. You can make this document any size you want, uh, depending on your ultimate uh, output needs. You can make this uh, sub significantly smaller if you're doing something small online or you may want to make it larger if you're doing a, a billboard or something uh, very large. I'm going to make it a size that will fit my screen which happens to be 950 by 600 at 72 dpi. So here we are with a blank screen here in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do is draw some tape, some Dymo tape and um, I'm just going to jump our back, our example back in here just to look at briefly, just as a reminder of what that tape looked like as far as its shape. Now we're going to go back to Photoshop and we want to use the pen tool. I'm just going to let it drop to my default uh, colors here of uh, black and white. If you wanted your Dymo tape to be a different color, you could change that. So I'm going to draw a strip of Dymo tape and I want the top and the bottom of my tape to be relatively straight because that's how the tape really is. So I'm going to click with my pen tool. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click again. I've got a straight line. Then I want the, the ends. The Dymo never really cut that tape perfectly straight. So I'm going to um, kind of be a little off here and then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hold my shift key down again, get a nice straight line. And then I need to close this path. And there we have our first piece of tape. I'm just going to come over here to the layers palette and I'll zoom in for you. What you want to do is grab this layer, drag it down here to the layer icon. This will duplicate that layer. Now we have two layers. I'm not going to worry about the naming here at this point, but you can name these two layers differently if you like. So now we have two layers here. They're on top of each other. I'm going to click on the top layer and if I have auto layer select, zoom in on that for you, if I have this checked it will automatically select the layer that I click on in the layer palette. So I've done that. I'm going to click this layer. So now I've got two pieces of tape. Now I have this copied layer selected and I want it to be a little bit different than the first version of this piece of tape that we made. So I'm going to go over to my path selection tool. I'm going to hold down on my left mouse button and I'm going to get the direct select tool. Now I'm going to be able to select a specific point on this shape and because I want to keep the horizontal lines horizontal for this example. I'm going to hold the shift key when I click that and I'm going to drag that shape out in a little bit different direction and I'm going to drag 
this lower right just a little bit different. Click on it and hold the shift and drag. I just want these to be a little bit random. I'm going to click the, the middle of this line and I'm going to drag it out a little bit to make the length uh, slightly different. Again, these things can vary what, however you'd like, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of randomness to the uh, look of these two pieces of tape. Move this up just a little bit and now we want to put some words on our tape. Just very quickly, I want to show you how the type tool works just in case you're not completely familiar with it. It's in your toolbar. Click on it, move over to your canvas, and begin typing. Once you have typed something, if you want to edit the size, color, etc., of that type, you can do it in this toolbar. Or if you need to do more refined work with your type, you can use this type uh, control panel, the character control panel, by clicking here. And you have, in addition to size controls, you have letting controls and uh, baseline shift and all kinds of other options. And most importantly, this is where you change your font selection. I already have the Dymo font selected here, but if you click here, you can see all of your fonts will show up. You've got all kinds of options here. I have already figured out my font size and I've selected the Dymo font and I'm gonna type some words here. I'm going to make this two separate lines of text. So we have two lines of text. Now the font was set to white and I did that on purpose because I wanted to be able to see the shape. Now I don't want these black hairlines between some of these letters so I'm going to kern that and that's fairly easy. Just uh, select your type tool again, select your type and using the alt and the left arrow key in between. You need to click between the letters that you want to kern. Holding down the Alt and clicking on the left arrow key, you can kern this spacing out. It's a good trick to know for other things that you might want to do. Again, I'll jump down and do a little kerning down here. Again, that's Option and the left arrow key. We'll get some of this spacing out of here. Tighten up the letters and get rid of the hairline in between. So at this point, we have a little bit of work in here. So I want to suggest that you save this file. And I'm going to go to Save As, and I'm going to just call this Dymo. For this effect to work correctly, I'm going to need a couple of additional shape layers. But we can make those shape layers really quick by using the Rectangle Shape tool and... We want to make sure that we have the shape layer selected. And what we want to do is put this shape layer just inside of the white font shape that we have. So we're just going to click and drag. And I'm going to keep it inside of that shape. And if I just click and drag again for my second word, now I have created two new shape layers. Now those shape layers are both black and they, because of the location I had selected in my layer palette, they are below the text that I had selected. So we have our two type layers above. I've just created two shape layers here. We need these two new layers that we just created to be white. So I'm going to double click on the thumbnail and select white. And I'm going to select the other shape layer that we made and select white for that. Now everything has disappeared, but only temporarily. Now we want to go up to our two type layers. And if you double click on the type layer icon and select the color palette option for it and make it black. And our other type layer, select the color palette option for it, make it black. And we are almost there. So join me for tutorial 006, where we will follow up and finish our Dymo label. Nice job, Raj. You've reached the end of this camping trip. Hike over to CampPhotoshop.com, where visitors can sign up for freebies and more video tutorials by Adobe Certified Expert and Camp Counselor, Roger Redpath.